it's kind of crazy hearing people say that they like my voice because I hate my voice. Like after I upload videos, I never watch it back. Like my voice makes me cringe. All right, before we get into your YouTubes, let's bring it back to who you are. Let's get this started because we just totally kicked it off. So, okay, we're here with the beautiful Crystal from pronouncing, I, I don't know why femininity, like when I try to say the word, I get tongue twisted <laughs> stick with it. But, um, okay, so black feminine, you see what I mean? Black, yeah. Black femininity TV. And um, I think this is, first of all, I'm doing this whole series for the love of it because I feel like we need to get back to why we why people do what they do, right? It's the love for something. It's why do I get up every day, regardless of how many views I get on my YouTube, regardless of how many hits I get on my Instagram pictures, what motivates a person? Because not everybody starts at a thousand hits. Then when they get to those hits, what does like, okay, so I got the hits, then what? I can stop and just live off the hits because some people truly do. Like once they start getting a certain amount of views, they just keep flowing with those views what keeps people motivated what that love behind it and also with seeing your youtubes and hearing everything going on which we're going to get all into now you see the lack of love and where and what it does and how it poisons and how toxic it is to a culture like black women who have oh my god paved the way from african dancing so, I mean, we go from dancing to music to black culture, something that for me, I get goosebumps talking about it because it's something that it's obvious that the reason why they shade it is because it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing. And then for some of us, you know, who come from the culture, the lack of, of what we, um, what, how, how do I say this? I want to be right when I say this, you know, we lack the knowledge. We lack the culture. We lack so when we're we're so when we go out there and, and black women wear the things they wear and other girls take to that, they don't even notice that. They're not yeah. even praising it within themselves in order for the culture to read, you know. So let's get into all of that. First and foremost, I saw a post the other day that said, um, for all the little girls in school that got on their report card, talks too much are like suit girls who are all powerful now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get back into your school, to, back to school and where you were in school and how did, did, where did this love for what you're doing right now and for the, you know, the, the pride for who you are as a black woman come from? Okay, so I was born and raised in the Virgin Islands and, you know, the Caribbean is a melting pot of different people, different cultures, different races. But my island, particularly St. Croix, um, we're mainly Black. Like, we, we do have Hispanic and also Middle Eastern. But everyone looked like me. Brown, more on the darker spectrum. And then we made the transition to come to the States. And I felt like the States had a lot of issues that I didn't really experience in the Caribbean, in a place where most people are brown or dark skin or black in general. And when I got here, I noticed that colorism was such a major thing. Like, you know, and it all goes back to black American history with, you know, um, the enslaved ancestors and being mixed with white and all types of things like that. So I kind of, I was forced into that whole colorist, um, I don't even know how to put it, but I was forced to know about colorism and what it meant to be dark skin and what it meant to be black when I came to the States. And I did have a period of time where I kind of hated myself. I was like, well, you know, we're the least desired. And 
I went out myself and I don't know, it's so crazy. I don't know. It's, it's so hard to explain, but I just had this journey of accepting myself, not just as a black woman, but being on the darker spectrum. So that's where the fire inside of me started burning. Like, look, black women, we're amazing, especially the dark skinned ones. We face a lot of things that the black girls on the lighter end of the spectrum don't have to face. So yeah, I, I would say in about 10th grade is when I really started getting into the pro-blackness and stuff. And I'm really proud that I did. Now, as far as pop culture goes, I, ever since I was a kid, man, I just loved pop culture. And I feel like my love of pop culture came from loving Nickelodeon because Nickelodeon was different from Disney. <laughs> Nickelodeon would play music videos during commercial breaks. Yep. They would talk about like, oh, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, blah, blah, blah. And that's where my love for pop culture came from. So when I was in about 10th grade, I was like, I want to run a media site. So I started blogging and everything. And this is about 2010, 2011-ish. And I started blogging. I actually had a channel, but it got shut down because of copyright infringement. Like I was uploading clips from the VMAs, you know, all types of copyrighted <laughs> stuff. Like I had no <laughs> idea that this stuff is licensed and I couldn't do it. Now the channel is back up. I just privated all the videos because you know, I, I've kind of moved on from the things that I used to post. So I took a hiatus from then. And then um, there was just this big string of depression from between 2012 to 2016-ish. Like, I just spent four or five years being super depressed. I wasn't taking care of myself. I got skinny. I mean, I was always skinny, but you know, I was, I had an eating disorder. So um, I was like, I can't do this. Like it's been five years. I need to do something else. So someone suggested to me adult coloring books. So I was like, dope. But I was like looking for coloring books that had like images of women that looked like me, like, you know, black women. So didn't find any and then I made the decision to self-publish my own adult coloring book because I had a friend she's an illustrator and I asked her to do some images for me so I published the adult coloring book and it was titled Black Femininity um so that's I where the name first and then I started writing I was doing articles freelance but I noticed a lot of times when I pitched um stories or topics they were getting stolen like they would <laughs> copy and paste my whole article verbatim and publish it with no credit no nothing and i was like this is ridiculous and around that time i was so into commentary channels on youtube so i was watching i don't know if you know who nikki swift is the man behind it is brian goldberg Brian Goldberg is Nikki Swift. I was like, but where's the stuff that I really like? Like, I like celebrity news and stuff, but I was like, where's the stuff about Destiny's Child? Where's the stuff about when 3LW got in a fight in the parking lot and there was food thrown? I'm like, where's the stuff that I like that Black girls like? So I just decided, I was like, I think I'm gonna make my own channel. So I went down to Fry's Electronics, got myself a microphone, and that's where the channel started. And this was summer of 2018. So I uploaded my first video and it had about like 100 views. So I was like, oh, well, this is moving slow. And about like four months later, I uploaded another video, 32 views. I was like, well, whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, this is lame. But then I was like, no, I got to keep going. So January 2019 came around 
And I just had a long list. Like I have this notebook that I write all these topics in. Like whenever stories come to my mind, I was like, oh yeah, that did happen. I'll write it down. And I was like, I need to do a video on that. So January came around and I just had so many topics, so many stories. And surviving R. Kelly became a thing. And I had planned on doing a video on that, like before surviving R. Kelly was even a thing. Wow. And I published that, that did pretty good. And then the second video that did pretty well was called The Secret Life of Wendy Williams. And I feel like overnight, that's when the channel started to grow. Like I went from 32 views to like 100,000 views and then like, 20,000 subscribers I'm oh, like this is amazing I should keep going and just like see you were saying um where does the passion come come from um what makes you want to continue doing it and it's the comments it's the viewers it's people saying oh my god I love this channel I can't wait for you to upload and sometimes I feel like I want to break and I do take breaks but I'm like, damn, there's so many people waiting. There's 250,000 people waiting for a new video every single week. And that's what keeps me going. That's so sorry, I'm, a, I'm sorry. I like, I know you didn't ask me all these questions. No, it was per, I mean, you basically, I'm, let me, hold on, hold on. One, two, three, four. I can check up four questions. <laughs> no, it was perfect. It was perfect. It was exactly what we needed. Because now we could just get into you know, where these topics, so you already spoke about where the topics come from. First of all, I absolutely, Nickelodeon was something I grew up with. Um, shows on like guts, do you have guts? And when they really used, when the slime was really, really a thing and there was every show, they were sliming people and the talk shows were like, it very, they were, they were like, um, what's that show from back in the days um, where you had to guess the, the prices, right? So yes. There were shows like The Price is Right, but kids were, the host was a, was a kid running the show, you know, and then they would slime the kids and give such cool prizes, and you knew that this was live going on. I mean, I love it. And then you start talking about the 90s and all that was going on, and then the 2000s and all that was going on and all that good stuff. Where we complain right now, I, I spoke to um, EFN recently, DJ EFN, and he was saying how we have to blame ourselves for where the industry is right now. And I have my opinions on it, which I've spoken in on Drink Champs, where I feel like my generation, not necessarily me, but we dropped the ball because it was the generation that made the most money in hip hop at one point. You're gonna grow older, and if you don't start to teach these jewels down to the next generation, the next that's generation's right. not gonna think of you that's when right. there's gonna be a gap, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, why is there a disconnect? Why do we love the 90s and the early 2000s so much? But then we've allowed this, this, we're not teaching it. We're not giving, you know what I'm saying? When I saw the MTV Cribs, Cribs episode, girl, that brought me back. Like, yes. it was so good to see. And then here, because I had no clue that people were renting houses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now we're going to get into like, the message of your channel because there's a message here you know so besides the history you know there's a message behind what's going on there's a message behind how the culture is being stolen from right under our noses you know but i also feel like we also see the curtains pulled up we have the j-lo's doing the voices we're all okay by it you know what i'm saying we're not really researching and we're just accepting it for how it is we got the milli vanillies you know all in there and we forget that it's a show as well. You know, so when you go out and you put out these topics and you, I wanna know, you know, there's a fine line between what's accepted. So now when we go into, when we go into the black culture being totally ripped off, even your stories and you actually feeling that and going through that, you know, that fine line of, is it being ripped off? Are, are we like, you know, what, where we're being ripped off at and where we're allowing it almost for the exposure of it, almost knowing that there's a curtain that hasn't been pulled down yet. Me as a Latina, I mean, I grew up black culture all around me, you know, I am so aware that my roots, you know, I come from Africa, you know, but where is that fine line too? Cause there's girls who, 
choose to be more white. There's Latinas who choose mm -hmm. to take that white end because, you know, they're going with their shade and they're, but then they adapt to what's around them. And it's like, I feel like there's a confusion out here. I feel like our message is being misconstrued. When you go out there and you say, stop stealing from us. You know, it's not because people say, okay, but what, well, where's that? Where's the influence then? Yeah. You know, so what's that fine line? Talk to me about all of that. Okay, so as someone who has Latin in the family as well, because, you know, Caribbean people wear everything. Oh, my God, but, we're so mixed. <laughs> look, listen. So, um, yes, people are products of their environment. Um, that's a real thing. Um, a lot of people adapt to Black culture, especially in New York. Like, Black culture... I feel like black culture started in New York, like rap music, so many different styles, so many things. So I'll see, I could see why the Latin community gravitates towards the black community. Um, I feel like where it gets misconstrued is that certain people aren't respectful of the, um, of the culture. But I don't know. Yeah, that's a, man, that's, <laughs> That subject, that's a lot. Right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I know a lot of Hispanics in New York gravitate toward more towards Black culture and hip hop culture. But um, no, man, that's a, that's a, that's, it's a that's tough a, one, right? Because as I was watching, you know, as I was watching your videos and I see the J-Lo, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I said, you see, this is where it gets misconstrued. The fact that we as artists go out, okay, let's say I have a manager behind me who's making me out to be this, you know, who's glorifying me out to be it this person. Clean, yeah. yeah, and, it's, and she, they're throwing me these outfits and they're throwing, but where did J-Lo give credit? That's where I feel like we're, we're getting yeah. that miscon. Because then now we go into your episode with the Kardashians and it's like, okay, they now have, Black babies who are growing into, but they, it, it's the lack of credit. You know, it's, it's the Bohemian braids coming out and it's her saying, well, I got it from the white girl back in the days who was doing it like a Barbie type of look. Yeah. And it's like, no, just give credit where credit is due. <laughs> no. Yeah, and I, it, I think it's beyond credit because I feel like with the Kardashians, Oh man, they have a huge issue with fetish and I don't feel like they appreciate the culture. It's more of an aesthetic and a fetish for them. And I do believe they fetishize mixed kids too. That, like that's just my opinion. But, um, I don't know, like since 2012, I think when all the sisters were all dating black men at the same time, it was just box braids and then the cornrows and then now they got gold teeth in their mouth and then um they using rap lyrics in their captions and stuff and i'm like okay do you uh, do you I, I, they make my head hurt listen like they don't, I'm sure they don't so know cute. the history of anything they started dating this black guy and it's like oh he played this rap song around me so let me use those lyrics i want to be down um let me wear these bamboo earrings let me put in some baby hair and stuff like that and i'm like this is corny and then um what upset me was the hairstylist thing like when she got the when kim got the pop smoke braids and um the black woman braided her hair, but Kim went and credited her white hair stylist as the person who braided it. And I'm like, why would you do something like that? And then you're aware of the criticism because you're disabling the comments now. Like all you had to be, all you had to do was be like, um, oh, that was my bad. It was actually this person who did the braids. But um, yeah, I feel like they have a real issue with fetishizing black culture and appropriating it and i know at one time um kylie was doing the whole chola thing her and kendall actually they were they had like a collection they're always in some crap with they little kendall and kylie brand but um oh my gosh speaking of latina i don't know if you remember when one of those magazines 
did a story about Kylie being the new Selena and how she's tapping into her Latina. And this was like around the time she was like doing all that Chola stuff. And I just remember Latina Twitter was like, no ma'am, absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm just like, do y'all just wake up in the morning and be like, hey, I, I think I want to participate in this. Whereas I feel like going back to what we were talking about, Hispanics in New York, like y'all grew up around that. Y'all are more familiar with it than the Kardashians from Calabasas and Beverly Hills. And again, like we were saying, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, when it came to the baby hairs, it was, we have all this extra hair growing out around us. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. like, what we can do? Let's style it up. Where that comes from, you know, the braiding of the hair in order to keep our messy hair intact. Because even mm -hmm. growing up as a Latina, it was known, it was, my little cousins who had thicker hair than I do. I mean, my hair looks like in a bun, but my hair is wild. You know what I'm saying? And wild in a great way, you know, but these, these, um, what do you call it? These images, we, we come, I grew up with that. You know, my grandma saying, brush your hair. You know, you can't go to school. Like, why can't I go to school with my little Afro? Why can't I go to school with my, you know what I'm saying? When a white girl could just get up and just cause her bun, you know, just cause her hair is dead, you know, and it doesn't look as messy as mine would look when I wake up, you know? So all those, all those, they didn't, they don't realize where these hairstyles came into play in order for us to feel that we were maintaining who we were and in order to help us appreciate our hair more. And this is, you know, we couldn't just let our hair be wild and say, I love who I am. Now there's a culture for that, you know, but growing up, it was like majority of Latinas too were relaxing their hair. You know, and again, it goes back to, and I don't mean credit. Maybe I should change that word of credit and say showing the love, you know, yeah, and appreciation. The appreciation and love mm -hmm. for who we are. The fact right. that you, and where are you guys? You're not in the hood. Right. And also, you could dress the part too. Okay, but where you at? Come to the hood. Show us when you're in your, 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 your um, what is it? The, the, what she came out the other day with the bandana get up. Yeah. And you're all, you're, come to the hood with that. They Take come down there. There. <laughs> See how we're going to show you. Not coming down there. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like it's that lack of appreciation and love, which what we started with in the beginning, that these celebrities don't realize. And it's not about, you know, because then they, they, again, that fine line of misconstruing our words to say, well, you guys, want us to accept you we're accepting the culture so when we do it no you're missing a point mm -hmm. you're, not, you're robbing us you're stealing from us and we see that because you're not even trying to live what we live in right and we're going out there and we're marching for the black lives matter one post ain't enough it's not especially you know when you have a big influence y'all have y'all are the most followed celebrities on social media especially on instagram y'all got nearly 200 million 200 million followers and you're sitting here posting about ear pods in the middle of people dying people are being shot people are being shot by rubber bullets all types of stuff pepper sprayed and you over here in calabas journalist who lost their eyeballs Listen. just to cover you know what i'm saying history and what are you celebrities doing out there and you know to get into the way you, you know, you formulate your channel and how you bring all this gossip to play. I don't like to call it gossip neither because I'm one that I don't take to gossip. I have a segment called Spread Love in which I speak about artists who are doing things for other people. And that's the only thing I touch on when it comes to artists, which is why I wanted to get into interviews like this too because I, it doesn't hit me well, you know, when I'm just talking about who got the new injections and the WAP song that just dropped. And right. it, it gets real funny for me. I feel like, you know, again, we're losing the culture. You know, this is where if I feel that my, the cult, it's something that I truly want to inspire people and motivate people. And it's something that you have to teach all cultures from black culture to Hispanic culture. to if we don't, you know, it's knowledge is power, you know, mm -hmm. and hip hop is a true culture. Right. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting all deep here. All right. You know, I, I want us to talk about how, how can we 
create more of a culture where we truly take into the black businesses, you know, the mom and pop shops, you know, how do we disconnect from the Gucci's and the polos and, and, and really get into this as a culture? What do you think about that? So I feel like first black people need to be seen as worthy. We can be luxurious. We can run top of the line brands. We have low end brands and we also run high end brands. And the thing is, there's a lot of internalized anti-blackness because I saw a post from Floyd Mayweather's daughter where she was criticizing everybody being able to have Birkin bags, all these black people being able to have Birkin bags. Like, oh, it used to be exclusive. Now everybody's running around with one. And I think First, we need to deprogram ourselves from thinking that just because uh, Black people are wearing something now that the value goes down. Like that is, that's where it starts. Cause I don't know, a lot of people think that we're not allowed to wear designer or luxury things. There was a whole argument on Twitter about, um, Santorini, Greece, looking like Miami Front Beach because more Black people are traveling there. And I'm like, see, we need to stop that. Like, we need to stop saying that because Black people are now going somewhere or wearing a certain brand that the value has gone down. Now, I am thankful for the recent uprisings because a lot of Black-owned brands have been getting a lot of recognition. But, um... I don't want it to just stop here. I, I definitely want those brands to blow up. Like we've been seeing Telfar, every time Telfar restocks, those bags sell out within minutes. And those bags start at about $150. I don't like that. I want to see more black luxury right. brands. And people were also complaining like, oh, now everybody's going to be walking around with a Telfar. No, Everybody needs to walk around with a Telfar bag. Everybody needs to be walking around with all these Black-owned brands because I feel like if we see more people with certain products that are Black-owned, people are going to be like, damn, but I, maybe I should get one. Maybe I need one of those. So that's my answer for that. I think um, my community needs to distance themselves from that, the idea that Black people rock in certain things um, brings the value down. I totally agree with you. And also the more we do, the more we see our community doing, the more it enlightens and motivates us to say, I can do that. Mm -hmm. If we're going to keep seeing the white America do what white America was blueprinted to do, we're never going to see that our ideas matter just with those little areas. If we can, keep feeding our communities more in order to motivate our, our children, you know, the future to really say, no, I can't do that. And again, to speak to these, to, I feel like there's a, a this again, with what I was saying earlier, the disconnect between why, what is it that we lost with the old hip hop and the new hip hop? You know what I'm saying? It's just the lack of knowledge. Maybe if we can teach the kids, why it was so dope and and the and the difference between lyrics being lyrical and just being boom bap you know what i'm saying which is not bad but there's just a time and a place for everything so if we could yeah. teach that and really make a culture to cultivate that i mean it'll be endless you know for for all of us yeah now with that said um, you talk about, you made so many amazing points with fashion, you know, in your, in your YouTube with Fashion Nova and how they, you know, how we have our immigrants who are getting paid a dollar for items who are being sold, with that items that are being sold for $60. And of course, this is not nothing new. Of course, the big corporate companies, bigger than Fashion Nova, are doing this to our people. But did you ever feel you could get into it, like maybe putting a petition out, maybe like getting to like getting to the law of it, like to really put something that there should be a law out that if something was made already, if you haven't spoken to or tried to reach out or even branched out with that brand, you know, because Fashion Nova would be great if they took from our black owned businesses, you know what I'm saying? But building with them, 
So, hey, I like this piece. What's a piece Fashion Nova can do with you? And then boom, put that out. You know, hey, I like, you know, with the Kardashians and yo, this always happens to me. <laughs> I can't wear AirPods. They never stay. Yo, my, okay, so we have that issue, right? I'm like. Yeah, like this part right here is very small and tight. Yeah, so and it doesn't go. <laughs> so back to what I was saying. So um, have you ever thought about that? Like really getting into it, like creating maybe a petition or a law that should be fought that, you know, us with us, you know, down here creating from the ground up can really fight for ourselves. I don't know if I thought about doing it myself because I think there's already people who's been creating fashion for years that are currently working on a law. But yeah, unfortunately, there aren't any laws protecting independent designers, especially if you didn't get um, an image licensed or anything, you, you're out of luck. And I think that's unfair. Now, some people have been lucky with their lawsuits for copyright infringement and stuff. But other than that, um, yeah, until there's a law passed, I don't know, man. I don't Hard, know. right? Like, we really got to just, and again, what you're doing with your channel, with Black Femininity, just keep pushing that, you know, just keep pushing through with your message. Keep telling the stories. And keep telling those stories. And, you know, what's next for you? Do you want to go into TV? Are you going to stick with the YouTube? Or what, 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 what's what's yes. you? <laughs> I'm glad you asked because, yeah, that is something I want to do. Like, um, I actually do want to be an actress. But aside from that, in relation to my channel, I want to bring back the fun in pop culture and also music videos because you remember when music videos used to be a big spectacle like they would like have a premiere in Times Square yes. and all crap and um in sync would go on TRL and everybody shows up like oh our video is coming up in 10 minutes stay tuned they're not doing that like music videos are just like okay we just uploaded the video for our new single I want to produce a talk show that's like 106 and Park or TRL. I don't know which station I would do it for, but I want to bring back the fun and pop culture, interviews, a live studio audience, performances, the music video countdowns, all those things. Yeah, all those things disappeared. And I know you were so talking true. about earlier, um, everybody gravitates to the 90s and the 2000s. And that's really because social media has killed a lot of things. Celebrities are more hyper visible than they were before social media. Yep. Like when we wanted to know something, we had to pick up a magazine or we had to right. go to a blog. Now, if somebody's beefing, they just log on to Twitter and let it be known or they're leaving comments on Instagram and stuff like that. And I think that's where the fun in pop culture, um, that's where it went away. Like the mystery, there's no mystery anymore. I so could true. count how many mysterious celebrities there are because everybody's hyper visible. You know what Britney Spears did today? Um, Rihanna posted a picture on a yacht. Like there's no mystery. But um, yeah, I would also love to run my own like pop culture magazine as well like I have so many ideas but I would love to be a producer of some type of music or pop culture television show I see it all for you I see you doing many big big things especially opening the door for black culture and just right. going for black women and I mean it's super amazing I mean and I'm gonna bring you back all the way to Michael Jackson, when he used to do his premieres, and those premieres were like, we knew, I would never forget, like my entire family literally sitting in the living room to watch on channel four or five. Like this was something big, you know, or even MTV when the black or white, the black and white video came out. I remember those premieres, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's so true what you say to bring that back. I was wondering how this pandemic is going to shape the entertainment industry in the future. Like, are, are concerts done for good? Oh, or no. for the next couple? I know, because I'm a con concert girl. <laughs> if I can't see Beyonce, I'm going to go crazy. Oh, yeah. she, sorry, this is off topic, but no. she actually 
had a stadium tour planned for the gift um black is king that she just released on disney plus and of course they got canceled i don't know what's gonna happen uh with the entertainment industry moving forward with the pandemic but um i am enjoying all the virtual shows and um, yeah him versus. too <laughs> but versus for me was more fun in the beginning I thank like you people, they're live streaming it on apple music and all this stuff i'm like can we go back to like doing the instagram lives together and this y'all to the top and bottom playing music right because and politics and sponsorships and all this involved in it now and i feel like with us being quarantined and that whole idea of being home it's so it's relatable you know what i'm saying they're on live like something that you know we can all be on live you know now you're making it into a i don't want to see that i don't want to see concerts on tv like, yeah, I don't want it. I'm a huge, I, I could, oh my God, concerts were my thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would be at one every week if I could. <laughs> I love concerts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even think next year they're going to go back to touring. I would be so mad. Like, uh, I need to go to a show. I didn't even, go to any this year. They all got canceled. Oh my God, even movie theaters. I'm such a oh. fanatic with the movie theaters i'm like why you no know, and i was just getting back into going to the movies because ever since that shooting happened with um when the dark knight rises happened oh my um, god yes year was that um but yeah i've been traumatized so i didn't go to the movies for a couple years but 2017 is when i was like okay i need to uh ease up a little bit let me start going back to the movie theater and then here we go. And it, it was a lot of good releases coming out this year, oh too. Oh, my God. So many. Mm. I was going to ask you, you mentioned being depressed. And right now we're in a, a culture which I really, really love how people are open to mental health. Mm -hmm. And what was one thing that brought you through that? I want, you to, I want to go back to that. And what was that one thing that you felt that kept you because some people you know from an eating disorder to like that's not something that's easy so i you know god bless you and i'm so happy you pulled through girl because what would i do without these video without these youtube right. you put me on to and all the information you gave me <laughs> so i want to know i want you to like enlighten us with what brought you through that oh there was one specific thing that really helped you get through well thank you first of all <laughs> but no um I always considered myself a super ambitious person, even since I was a kid. But with my depression, I, I just gave up so many times. I'm like, this is, I'm done with this. But there was always like a, some fire burning in my chest or just this gut feeling of hope. Like, no, I need to hold on. I need to keep going. Like there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I would always think back to when I was a little girl and I would envision myself as an adult and all the things that I wanted to accomplish. And I would be like, what would I say to my eight-year-old self? Would my eight-year-old self be proud of me? So I was like, I need to be that person that I wanted to be when I was a child. So that's kind of what got me to get up. I was like, I need to just wait. Maybe my time isn't here. And one thing I was doing a lot was comparing myself to other people and what people in my age group were doing. I think that's what brought me into a funk. Like all my friends are already graduating college. I didn't start college. I, um, I'm not doing what I dreamed of doing. I'm working in a restaurant and then like I said, it was just that fire inside of me that was like, you need to keep going. So I disconnected myself from social media for about a year. And I was taking time to draw, journal. Like I said, adult coloring books. Like I loved coloring. I do. And I was too. also playing The Sims. So, <laughs> you know, I was do doing fun activities. And then I was spending more time in solitude getting to know myself reading books i feel like that's what helped me get out of my funk i was like i gotta keep going so so happy that you did and that we're here right now 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And that you're doing what you're doing, girl. Because, I mean, it's a true... It's so motivating and so enlightening to see. I mean, although those words may sound cliche sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But I truly, to hear your voice on those videos, to be from the Missy Elliott to the, I'm, I'm telling you, that J-Lo one, I didn't know a lot of that. <sighs> Listen. And I'm one, okay, I'm going to be real. Boricua, Latina, yes. I love me my J-Lo for where she is what she's done for the Latinas and the community. You know what I'm saying? But as a little girl, (laughs) I was one that I tried to say hi to J-Lo and she kind of like closed the curtain on me. Really? Yes, in person. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I didn't get it. Like, you know, so when she came out with Jenny from the block, I was like, yeah, she still has that block mentality. You know, that that I'm not so (laughs) very nice. (laughs) But again, to hear all that I heard, I was just like, holy moly way where do you get where do you where do you stop and say and 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 give back you know? right because that's my thing okay I get it I get it it's a show we're putting on a show so if they hire me and they're spinning me off to be this freaking Cinderella I mean cool but come on come back come back to us come right. back to you know that that outpour that we're putting out there and all that love that we're giving you and all those numbers and all that money you made off of us come back <laughs> show us that love you know so you know i love jennifer lopez i know people think i hate her although i did the video no i i actually enjoyed her music growing up but what led me to do this video like a lot of other videos is I'm always curious about something. So there was, I forgot that song. I think it's called gonna be all right. Oh, I was so this, my I'm, favorite. Not, I'm like her. I kept saying to myself, even as a child, I would be like, this don't even sound like her. So it, that video was born out of curiosity. Because I was actually, I was listening to my Jennifer Lopez playlist when the idea came to me. I'm like, damn, that don't sound like her. Who is this? So I went and checked the credits and they were like, yes, it's an unknown vocalist, uncredited vocalist on there. And then I found out there were a bunch of other songs where um, there were vocalists that weren't credit and she passed it off as if it was her vocals and then it was that song ain't it funny that she did with um ain't Fat it Jordan. funny huh ain't it funny <laughs> Damn, she sounded like a shanti <laughs> and then it was confirmed it was a shanti singing i'm like jennifer what is this what, what happened jennifer <laughs> and the thing is she's not that great of a singer but the vocals that she was go singing to wasn't the best vocals either so i was like you couldn't do this And then there's so so much technology to edit voices and stuff. I was like, well, if you didn't sound good, they could have cleaned it up in the studio. Which was what I always thought it was. I just thought it was like they were, but when I saw your video and I started putting the voices together, I was like, how could I have not put that together? I was talking with Laura and I'm like, how? She was like, but you didn't, some of the, like, the Shanti one everybody knew. And I was like, oh. Don't say everybody because I'm including that everybody and I didn't know until I saw this YouTube. <laughs> I was suspicious. Even like I like I keep saying as a child, and my mom was a huge Ashanti fan. So I was like, damn, that sounds like Ashanti. But at the same time, her and Jennifer kind of sounded similar. I wouldn't say similar. It was well, what kinda. they did. The magic they played yes made them sound very similar and i was like okay well i guess the shanti was cool with it i mean she is who she is now you know what i'm saying and that was the come yeah. up you know she, said so, she got paid for it so i don't well, think I, she cares i could imagine i could yeah and then the tommy was like oh girl, my you goodness blew my mind. Messy. That man is <laughs> you blew my mind. and the fact that i was such a mariah carey fan that mariah back in the, oh my god i was I like know. Nobody could do any, I mean, for where, where it's at now, I'm like, you know, a lot of our legends, they kind of ruined the, <laughs> the image of it. Yeah. But, oh, I loved Mariah. So when I heard that, I was like, that was shady. Because I know how Mariah, too, there's stories of how she was like, almost, 
she was almost being abused by this man because he, you know, he had her wearing turtlenecks. He had her like in a specific image that she couldn't break out of until she left him. Right. You know, so I was like, oh my God, the way things work, you know, it's, it's good gossip, you know, and still, yeah. we still love JLo. This is what I'm saying. Like, I still love JLo for what she's done, who she is. Uh, oh my God. I mean, we can't deny it, but. Yeah, you can't diminish her success. But, exactly. Uh, we got to tell the truth. <laughs> but, but the stories is good and everybody. Yeah. I know her fans were mad at me. Like, they exposed my phone number and address. I was like, y'all, I don't make the news, okay? Uh, <laughs> not that serious. It was great. Right? To, honestly, it gave more character to who J-Lo has been and yeah. her come up. You know, to know that story, again, like we were saying, it doesn't take away from who J-Lo is. Never will. You know, the fact that she was able to mastermind that and people still took to it is why she is who she right. is. <laughs> Right. And that's where the fans have to see it. Like, all right, girl, but she's still J-Lo. And you'd be like, this is true. But, <laughs> you know, we're not trying to take from it. But it was so good to hear. And so, like, oh, I love stuff like that. I love to be informed. And you know what I'm saying? It's just, mm -hmm. it's so good. And, again, the fact that you're doing it for the culture and the fact that you're doing it as a proud Black woman. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to get, I don't want that to, I don't want that message to be missed here. You know, yeah. that's the point of your YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the culture is amazing. Yeah, but let's get back to what Black women started. Let's get back right. to what Black culture started and Absolutely. how everybody put into that melting pot, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so important. I, I know a lot of people think that, um, well, I only a few comments, but some people are like, oh, well, you're making white topics now. Like, um... MTV Cribs or Pimp My Ride. I'm like, okay, yes, those shows, you know, had mainly white folks on there, but they were entertaining to black folks. Thank you. As well. So I'm like, I, how could I not talk about some of these topics? Like, we were watching My Super Sweet 16. There were barely any black and brown folks on there. We were watching, well, I can't say MTV Cribs. There were a bunch of rappers on there on every episode. <laughs> But um, yeah, I try to stray away from the gossipy things because some people be like, oh, are you going to talk about um, this drama with Future and his baby mamas? I'm like, that's not interesting. I'm sorry. No. Um, I want to be entertaining more than anything. Entertaining and informative. And yes. I feel like discussing certain topics does damage to the culture and our image. So I rather not discuss certain things like what the shade room does or some of those other Instagram blogs. Like I, I try to stay away from those type of things. No shade. But also, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of things. Yeah, no shade. <laughs> there's a lot going on in the world. So although I do discuss serious topics, I try to be an outlet or an escape for people I was like, you know what? They got all these police shootings going on. Let me turn on some black femininity to hear about why the singer tweet disappeared or, you know, something else. But yeah, I, I try to be informative and also entertaining for my core audience, which is black women. And again, what you were saying when, when people say like, you're, you're picking white topics. Mm -hmm. Um, no, because they're trying to feed the black community. They know what we're interested in hearing about, listening about. They're taking from us. Mm -hmm. So it's not, again, let's stop playing it out to be white topics. Regardless yeah. of what artists they use, at the end of the day, we're the ones that make all of these shows what they are. We're the ones half watching. These, exactly. Half of these people ain't in their house what like no we're the ones that we're the ones making all these companies who they are and if we could realize that power we can see how much we're worth you know what i'm saying our worth it's crazy because i was reading this like research about how black and brown people are the biggest consumers like we support everything we buy everything no everything. matter what neighborhood or what like, you can always find somebody 
who lives, I wouldn't say middle class, well, you could say lower middle class, but you know, they might treat themselves to some designer as well. That's right. It might cost more than their rent or something, but we're the biggest consumers. We're always going to go out there and make ourselves feel good. We're going to be watching all these television shows, all of these award shows. We're sitting through the commercials because you know, the commercials is what gives them the money. That's but right. We're the consumers. So Yep. When it comes to everything, how many Nikes, Ni- pairs of Nikes I buy for my son a year. Right. And I know families who have the money and not to say I don't have the money, but I know families who throw away that kind of money on, you know, and, or who hold that kind of money and their kids are wearing one pair of sneakers all year. Mm-hmm. And that family's living in the house and I'm over here struggling in the hood. Mm-hmm. But my son is up to par with every pair of sneakers that drop. You know, so it's that mentality that we have to realize too, you know, and give and, and see that without us, these companies ain't nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and we're the minorities. That's- if you look at how white folks outnumber the minorities in this country, it's insane. What is black people in America? What, 2%? And we're the biggest spenders? It's crazy. 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 Ugh. My gosh. Oh, it was so enlightening talking to you. I love, love, love it. Is there anything you want to touch on that we didn't get to, you know, touch on or you feel like we hit? Oh, so for Black Femininity TV. Yes. You have a series coming out. It's a film series where I'll be visiting the film locations for a lot of popular black films from the 90s and different times what i've been working on that for over a year now and the videos should start popping up within the next month or two so i'm very excited i'm gonna let all my subscribers know to come watch our video because that is i love you so fire girl like i'm in love with that idea I can't wait. I'm going to be plugged, plugged, plugged. Yes, I'm excited because um, I know we're wrapping up, but let me just say, like, I know you got you got all the time you need, girl. I'm here. I'm here to talk. I just love old school films. Me too. Going to revisit like the house from Friday or the film locations from Waiting to Exhale in Arizona. Things like that is like so dope to me to be there like what 20 something to 30 years later just being there like when I was in LA I went I don't know why but I went to like this like warehouse where Michael Jackson filmed the beat it video you remember when he started they came in there (laughs) I was like I need to go see where this was at and I went to the thriller (laughs) house I went to all of those things and I'm like the thriller house that's so popping I want to buy it It, it's up on the market but it's it's like, it's not taken care of. It's an, an abandoned, jacked up house. And I'm like, no, I need to buy this house and like turn it into a museum or something. What? That will be, oh my goodness, girl, that, that idea. Oh, and, and again, what we were talking about, the lack of just what people don't know. Like why watch all the old movies? That's where it was at. Right. You know what I'm saying? All those, oh my God, from... Oh, I'm I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Like I'm like so excited for you. That's so popping. Yeah, I'm excited too. And um yeah, so I'm gonna be in the videos. I know I'm not visible on the channel, but yeah, so my subscribers definitely gonna see more of me. Yay! So, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you for having me though. This was no. a great conversation. I wasn't sure at first. I was like, who is this? <laughs> and then I went and watched your videos yesterday. I was like, oh, this is gonna be dope. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, girl, I was glued. I've been watching your videos for the past week. And I've been like one after another. Then yesterday I was like binging on all the most recent ones. I'm like, oh my God, everything you're doing, you're such a light. Keep pushing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for even sharing with us, you know, from the darkest to the, you know, from the dark to the glory. And for what's to come for you, beautiful. Because I am 
you're gonna start a whole i just hope you know you sign me up to work for you one any of one of your little producers of course jobs or like whatever corresponding <laughs> for my little countdown Girl, to to hit up. and i would love 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 in the winter when i get back to working with the kids i would truly truly love for you to do a zoom with them and speak to my girls Aww. and motivate them because they are all into your YouTubes. And I'm sure you know that's such a big part. Oh, please. I, mm -hmm. We still need to keep these conversations going. What Definitely. you're doing is something needed right now. And I thank you. That's another thing. You know, besides content, these are things needed. You know, even what's, come, what's to come for you with that movie thing. To bring those memories back. To even put that out for people to start tapping into those movies. If they haven't been into those movies. You know, I love it. You're beautiful. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Your smile is radiating. That's oh, what makes me feel. You. That's why I felt comfortable because I was like, um, I don't know what it's gonna be like. <laughs> but you know, for me, feeling comfortable is important, and you made me feel comfortable. And I love the conversations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. And speak to you soon. This is this is the first of many. Yes. <laughs> I'll speak to you again. Yes. Bye, beautiful. Bye.